This lecture is on writing equations of lines. This is from section 2.4 in our book. So in the last section, we graphed equations of lines. We graphed equations from slope-intercept form or from standard form. And in this section, we're actually going to be kind of doing the opposite. We're going to be given information about our lines, and we need to write the equations of them. And this table is kind of useful. Uh, if It depends on what you're given. If you're given m and b, m, of course, is the slope, and b is the y-intercept, it is very simple to write our equations in slope-intercept form. Of course, this would be slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. If we are given the slope and a point, you may use either point-slope form or you may use slope-intercept form. And I don't really care which one you decide to use to write the equation. This here is point-slope form, and of course, this would be slope-intercept form. Point-slope form uses the slope and a point. The point uh, would be x1, comma y1. So whatever the x-coordinate would go there, and whatever the y-coordinate is would go there. If you are given two points, then first you need to use slope formula. And then you can decide whichever one you like better, point slope or slope intercept form, and write it as such. So first up, here's our first example. Uh, if I told you, hey, the slope is negative 2 and the y-intercept is negative 4, you better be really good at writing this equation because I can't really make an easier question. Remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So negative 2 goes in for m, negative 4 goes in for b, uh, and we come up with y equals negative 2x minus 4. Taking it up a notch, I don't give you the slope and the specific y intercept, I give you the slope and any random point. Now for these ones, I said you could use point slope form or slope intercept form. And on most of your quiz questions, I will say what form I want your final answer. To write it in point slope form, that's the one that's y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. It's really easy to write it in point slope form. All you have to do is fill in the m, x1, and y1. So this would be x1, and this would be y1, and that's the m. So if I just fill that in, y minus 4, right, I'm plugging 4 in, that's y1, is equal to negative 3, x minus 5. So this is this equation in point slope form. That would be an answer if... I asked for, hey, point slope form is acceptable. However, it also isn't that difficult to convert this into slope intercept form, if that was my question. To do the conversion, you basically just need to simplify this. What you're first going to do is you're going to distribute the negative 3. y minus 4 is equal to negative 3x. Be careful here that negative does get multiplied into the negative 5 plus 15. Now, this doesn't quite look like y equals mx plus b yet because of this minus 4, so we'll add 4 over. y equals negative 3x plus 19. So if I ask for point slope form, that would be this one. If I ask for slope intercept form, that would be the one in red. Why don't you guys go ahead and try this one? Pause it here, see how you do. All right, so y minus y1 is equal to m, x minus x1. 2 is the slope, that will go in for m. x, now these are negative, so be careful here. x minus a negative 4 is just x plus 4. Same thing with y minus a negative 2, that's just y plus 2. I'm going to distribute this 2 in y plus 2 is equal to 2x plus 8, and y is equal to 2x plus 6. So if I had asked for it in point slope form, this would have been acceptable. If I asked for it in slope intercept form, which is the most common form I'm going to want it in, that would be the right answer. So this would be the examples where I give you 
two points and I ask for you to write an equation, uh, the very first thing you're going to need to use is slope formula. Slope formula is how you calculate the slope given two points. We've gone over it in the past, but the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It doesn't matter if this point is x1 or if this one is x1, but uh, most commonly we just call the first one x1. So what it ends up looking like would be y2, that would be this one, right? Because this is x2, y2, x1, y1. So y2 minus y1, negative 7 minus 5, divided by 4 minus, careful here with your negatives, x2 minus x1, x2, 4, minus a negative 2. So what I come up with is a slope of negative 2. Now, when I have to write my equation, we were using point slope form to do that, and now I have two points. And it doesn't actually matter which point you use. I'll use this first one here. Writing it in point slope form, I would have y minus 5 is equal to negative 2, because we calculated the slope, it's negative 2, x plus 2. This is point slope form using the first point. Point slope form using the second point would be y plus 7 is equal to negative 2, x minus 4. Now these don't really look alike, the numbers are quite different. However, they are actually going to be the equations of the same line, and I'll prove it to you. If I convert either one of these into slope-intercept form, they should give me the same answer. Let's do that. Distributing negative 2 would give me y minus 5 is equal to negative 2x minus 4. Doing the same here would give me y plus 7 is equal to negative 2x plus 8. Now I have to add 5 on both sides of this equation to get y equals negative 2x plus 1. And adding, subtracting 7 over here would give you y equals negative 2x plus 1 as well. So either way, they were the same equation. This is point slope form using the first point. This is point slope form using the second point. And this would be the answer if I asked you con to convert it into slope intercept form. You guys go ahead and try this one. Pause it here. See how you do. When I do this, 10 minus a negative 2 over 2 minus 5, that is 12 over negative 3, which gives me a slope of negative 4. Once again, I'll do point slope form first. y plus 2 is equal to negative 4, x minus 5. From here, you distribute the negative 4 in. y equals negative 4x plus 18. Read it right. Look at us go. Now, there is another way that I'm asking these questions. Really, all I'm doing is kind of repackaging the same question and, and tossing it to you slightly differently. Instead of giving you the slope and a point like I was previously, I still give you the point that it goes through, but instead, I think I skipped a page. I still give you the point that it goes through, but instead of telling you the slope, I kind of hide it. All it does is require you to remember what it means to be parallel. Hopefully, you guys remember from previous sections that parallel lines have the same slope. They have different line intercepts, so we don't actually use this one at all. But we do say, okay, if it's parallel to y equals negative 4x plus 1, then this new point that we're, this new line that we're trying to make also is going to have a slope of negative 4. Because they're parallel. Parallel lines have the same slope. So now, this is the point that I'm using. This is the slope. And I'm going to go ahead and write that equation. I'm actually going to show you a different way to write it in slope intercept form, and I don't care which one of these ways that you do this. Something else you can do is, we know slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So what you can do is you can plug negative four in for m. 
So our answer is going to look just like this, except for B is going to be filled in with whatever the y-intercept is. <coughs> so we're going to use our point to plug that in for x and that in for y to solve for B. Once we know what B is, it's just going to go right there and be plugged back in. So the y value is 3. And this is a pretty simple algebra question to solve for B. 3 equals negative 8. Plus B, add 8 on both sides, B is 11. So we get negative 4x plus 11. Remember, we could have just written it in point slope form, which would have been y minus 3 is equal to negative 4x plus 2. Distributed the negative 4. And then added 3 to both sides, except now I found a good news. Negative 4x minus 5. So where is the mistake? Well, this is negative 8. Mm, here it is. This should have been negative 2, which would have made that 8. Subtracting 8 would have been negative 5. So me doing it both ways ended up helping me catch my mistake. Valuable lesson. Look at that. Either way, we got an answer of negative 5. Y equals negative 4x minus 5. Because we subtracted 8 here, subtracted 8, that gave us negative 5. Same answer. So I'm going to write an equation in slope intercept form. So that passes through this point, negative 8, 3, that's perpendicular to this line. Remember, perpendicular slopes are opposite reciprocals of each other. So if you know that it's perpendicular to this line, you have to make it a reciprocal, which would be negative 1 fourth. But then one should be positive and one should be negative. So since this one's already negative, our perpendicular slope is going to be 1 fourth. So what you have to do is you have to flip the fraction and then change it from, a, if it was negative before, change our new one will be positive and vice versa. So our slope is one fourth. Now we can write our equation. Let's turn it into slope intercept form. I don't care if you do point slope into slope intercept form, or if you do this thing here where you say y equals mx plus b. You plug one fourth in for m, negative eight in for x. One fourth times negative eight is negative two. So b is 5. So the equation perpendicular to this line that passes through this point should be y equals 1 fourth x plus 5. The last thing I want to talk about is converting something into standard form. So what we're going to use is just our, our answers here and convert these. If I ever ask you to write an equation in standard form, what I first want you to do is write it into slope intercept form, like this, and then simply convert that into standard form. Remember, standard form looks like ax plus by equals c. So basically, what you need to do is you just need to rearrange this to be in the proper form, except with standard form, we can never have any fractions. A, B, or C cannot be fractions. So in this problem, it's not going to be uh, not going to be a big deal. We need the X to be first. So to move it to the other side, we notice, hey, right now it's a negative 4X. The way to move a negative 4X is going to be to add 4X. And if you do that on one side, you do it to the other. So this equation moved in the standard form would just be 4X plus Y equals negative 5. That was pretty easy, right? We just had to move the x to the other side. So it's 1, move x to the other side. And then 2, make sure there's no fractions. And when I say no fractions, I also mean no decimals. I'll show you an example of that in a second here. So first convert it into self-intercept form and then change it from slope intercept form into standard form when you're asked to use standard form.
Here's another one, same idea. Converting this into standard form is super easy. There's a negative 4x here. To move it to the other side, you would add 4x. 4x plus y equals 18. Right? That would be in standard form now. This guy here, same idea. Add 2x to both sides. 2x plus y equals 1. That conversion into standard form should be super easy, except when we have a fraction as a slope. So here, we're going to subtract 1 fourth x to both sides, because we want to move this whole unit to the other side. So then we have negative 4, 1 fourth x plus y equals 5. Now, your trick here to get rid of the fraction is to take whatever is in the denominator and multiply everything by that. So if I multiply everything by 4, that's going to end up wiping out the fraction, and nothing else will be if, if this was the only fraction or decimal. So how did I pick 4 again? I just took whatever was in the denominator. 4 times negative 1 fourth. The 4 and the divide by 4 cancel, and it's just negative 1x, but you could verify that with a calculator if you wanted to. 4 times y is plus 4y, and 4 times 5 is 20. Now, some people say that the first term should never be negative either. So if you wanted to make this term positive, you could multiply everything by negative 1, and that would also be a correct answer. So I would, on our quizzes or tests, accept either one of these answers. Let's do just one more like that. I'm just going to write an equation in slope-intercept form. Negative 2 thirds x minus 6, let's say. If I asked you to convert this into standard form, the first thing you should do is add 2 thirds x to both sides. And then you say, OK, there's a 3 in the denominator. That's pretty easy to do. I'm just going to multiply everything by 3. And then nothing will be in a fraction or decimal at that point. 3 times 2 thirds is 2. And that would be our answer. Once again, let me know if you guys have any questions.